Okay, uh, let's show how to edit our geometry and uh, create break lines. So we have this model here that uh, well, uh, start running 100 meters per second and then uh, start running and oh, there is a moment in which the water uh, flows over uh, a wall to contain the flood actually and, and that, that it might be real, it might be not. And uh, uh, one very nice trick is uh, we click in our depth and click in the particle tracking. We can see if uh, the water is uh, actually, for example, where is the water coming from? Can we, we should look at it with, with critical eyes. So here, for example, it's, it's coming from the upstream under conditions, so that's correct. But let's move a little bit ahead on time and wait for the particle tracking to flow. Here, for example, this is a, an example where water is flowing through where it shouldn't. And if we activate the geometry, we can see that there is a cell that has a corner in one side and another corner in the other side. So it computes the water surface elevation and it doesn't capture that there is a high point in between. This is a classical example. So what we can do is, is uh, draw a break line in between. So we break this square structure in the mess. So we, so Hekras can define uh, better the geometry. So let's do it. Uh, I'm going to take off particle tracking and uh, it's good to see, for example, the, this, this computation that we already have is, uh, I'm going to take out the Google satellite. I like to click the terrain and uh, update legend with view. This uh, is a better display so I can see better uh, the wall that I want to capture in my geometry. I go to the geometry that I have created. Uh, plus 2D flow areas, break lines, right click on it, edit geometry, and we are, uh, I'm gonna unclick this one, and I'm gonna start drawing my break line. So, yeah, this is a iterative process when we see errors that we can improve. So, sometimes it's many hours that we spend doing these things uh, so that the model captures the best of our geometry. And a little bit more, yes, let's stop here, double click to finish, okay, break down number one, I could put another name. You see it's doing something with it, but to really compute it, we have to right click it and enforce all break lines. Now the break lines have been created. And another nice feature is if I right click on the break lines, and I go to edit break line properties, I can choose a near spacing. And here my, my cells are five meters. I'm gonna choose a near spacing of two and a near repeat of three. What does this mean? It means that it will create a squares. Now they are five meters, the squares on the side of the break lines. But if I choose two for near spacing, the square on the side will be two meters. And the near repeats, it will repeat this three times along the break line. We will see it now. Why do, would I do this? Right click and force all break lines. Because I want a better definition of my geometry there. And sometimes this is uh, very useful in places that, or locations where we, we want better resolution uh, of our computation. So this is done. I will right click on it, stop editing, save uh, my, my new geometry. I'll go to the plan to run the new thing. I have the plan name, save plan as. I'll choose the name from before, but plan 02, and I'm going to call it break lines. So an intuitive name that tells me what I'm aiming for. OK, copy, and I paste the same name on the short ID. I can choose two hours and a half should be enough. Remember the numbers with not double points or anything such. 15 seconds for the time, uh, current condition. Yeah, that is good. And we click compute. If there is any issue anyway, this uh, across computation window will tell me. Ah, uh, let's see, let's see. This this is a very nice tool to, to define better our geometry. We can also use refinement regions. We can also use the manning layer to calibrate the model and define our roughness coefficient. 
We will also show that in other videos. It is completed very fast, very, very nice. In the meantime, I can also show how, imagine that we want to, to change our 2D flow area. Why? Because for example, here we see that the water is, it's not really capturing what is happening. It's like crushing, uh, crushing uh, with our 2D flow boundaries. And if we wanted a, a complete uh, a flooded area, we, we, we should, we, we need a little bit more of a space, right? So if I wanted to change this, I will go to perimeters, right click, edit geometry, and I will go up here and I say edit features. I'll choose my 2D flow area, double click, and I can move the points that already exist, or I could create new ones in between this and like that. And when this is created, this is important that I will go right click and uh, generate computational points and with break lines, because now we also have break lines. Uh, why? Because there are new points here that have not been computed yet. We have defined the 2D flow area, but we have not computed the points. So we kind of have to repeat the same process that we did at the beginning when we uh, defined our geometry. But in this case, I'll just leave it like this. I'm going to stop editing, not save, because this is to show. Let's see how our results are going. It is computing well. There is no error so shown uh, here. Sometimes uh, there are errors, but in this case we are uh, being lucky and no no big trouble. Uh, what else can I show? I'm gonna mean not to talk to you about something. Uh, we can see here if I go to uh, edit geometry all the different features that we can input in our geometry. So, so far we have talked about perimeter, the computational points, the break lines to the refinement regions it will be interesting to define areas where we want our ge geometry, our mesh to be finer. Bridge culvert structures of course are very important, inline structures, 2D connections and so on. Manning layer, very important for defining the roughness. Uh, even infiltration we got now in thick grass and so on. So many, many, many things here. This river and cross section is more interesting for defining a 1D model, but we will also talk about this. Let's see. Ah, the plan tool already shows up here, so it seems that we are ready to show the results. You want to save? No, because we haven't really changed anything. We can say it's finished, no error shown, so close. We can go here, click in our results, click in depth, and click the previous one to see. I really dislike that the default is 15, so I always go here and change it for 2, for example. Create RAM values, OK. And let's see. I hope at least that the particle tracking uh, this uh, particle tracing doesn't show that the water is flowing through the wall. And it shouldn't. It's got to show. Let's see. Now it seems good. The water is behaving more normal. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. So yes, this is how it should be. Uh, yeah, I hope uh, this uh, trick is useful for you, for your models, and uh, use brake lens in a smart way. So you are still using big uh, mesh, like five meters that I'm using here. The, the program still captures very well your geometry. Bye-bye.